This is my six inch block plane here, Stanley. Nothing fancy. Can be one hand, can be two hands. Uh, I like it. I like the spoke shave a little better for the curved areas, obviously, because it has a, a smaller requirement as far as distance that it needs to run. The plane is always going to work best when it's got at least six inches. And you really want to take advantage of, of the flatness of the sole here. That tells you that the surface you're working is approaching the flatness of the sole ultimately. You know, if you've got a lot of ridges and a lot of roughness, at first the the sole of the plane is going to be, you know, like sitting on the peaks of those of those rough objects. But as you knock off the very tips of those peaks, things are going to go down and you're going to be again contacting more surface area of the worked surface with the plane and you'll start seeing magic happen. As I've said before, uh, in the book and, and elsewhere, wood is generally easy to remove and it's really hard to put back on. It is okay to take it slow and when you think you're getting close to the limit, stop because if you go past that limit, you're taking too much off and you, you really can't put it back on. Better to stop short than to go one too far. Same, a lot of the same principles apply and you're not going to be getting very much as you hold the tool on an edge. But as that edge flattens out into more of a plane, you'll see that the wood you're removing is, you're removing more pretty dang fast. You don't need a lot of pressure. Most of the wood for paddle making is going to be pretty soft. With this bottom piece, you need to remember that you want the side of this first shaft piece to be nice and straight and flat so that the edge of the blade has a good surface to mate up with. So I stop well above the bend. Even though the blade probably ends about right here, I'm gonna stop up here because I wanna creep up on this. I don't wanna round this corner off or it's gonna show up when I go to mate the flat square edge of the blade against the rounded edge of the shaft piece. So with any tool, you gotta to be careful about stopping well before the, spa the spot where you think the top of the blade is going to join because you want everything below that spot to be straight and true and square so you get a nice tight connection. Just like with the spoke shave, I'm trying it both directions and it feels markedly different. And I think you could even hear that basically. Well, I think this is making a little too aggressive of a cut. So I'm going to loosen it and turn it back. I've always put my, I like putting my finger under it right on the sharp edge and then I turn counterclockwise and I can feel the blade retract a little bit. So this is, this is too thick, too thick of a shaving. I want something thinner. I'm removing the wood too fast. I want to go nice and slow. The ideal, the ideal shaving, you can just about see through. I'd say this is still too thick, so I'm gonna turn it down again. Don't be in a rush, just take your time. This is the fun part of shaping your paddle. You can kind of hear how it's skipping. That's because it's, there's highs and lows, so it's the six inches of the sole is caught on the two highs and the blade is going in air uh, between the highs. Um, but as you knock those highs down, they get to be the same elevation as the low, so you have more more contact being made. You don't need to press all that hard. This is soft wood and it, you know, I'm assuming you've got a sharp, a sharp edge on your plane. And even though I said we're going to be working just this bottom side, I'm, I am skipping up here, you know, to all five pieces and, and affecting all five. And I kind of want in my mind's eye, I'm always keeping in mind an egg shape. So I want, this is the top of the shaft here that's going to be under my grip. I want this pretty much to fit, 
you know, right up on the bottom side of my of my knuckle of my three-fingered hook as I see my hand when I'm when I'm paddling. That last batch of shavings felt just like the right thickness, by the way. So both directions, hold the blade at an angle in the direction you're going, hold it in the other angle, and then hold it really at an angle. You've got angles this way and you've got angles this way. You've got multiple dimensions to think about and you've got, you know, most people like having their dominant hand in the back of the plane. I happen to be left-handed, so I'm having to do this backwards to fit the camera. But most people like their dominant hand. I notice epoxy being shaved off in a block plane more than I do in the spoke shave. And you can see it, you can see it well up sometimes um, on the top of the top of the plane. It's kind of cool. So I'm still keeping in mind my stroke count. I'm just about ready to stop and flip it over. And again, probably the most important part of working with this first shaft strip, the one to which the blade will join, is recognizing that you need to, midpoint of this bend, you need to stop so that everything below it is kept straight and 90 degrees so there's a nice strong connection with the blade. If you round this edge over here, you're going to see it primarily, but you're also lessening the surface area for the epoxy to attach the blade to the shaft. Okay, so there's one side. Now we're on to the other, so... Again, this first part is really small because I'm primarily just knocking the sharp edge off. And the more I do, the bigger the shavings get. So you can take short, small strokes and work your way up. You can take, you know, continuous length of the shaft if you want. And don't just do it to do it. You want to keep in your mind's eye, you know, the point here is to get this shaft profile fitting your grip. So even though it's easy to get lost in the work, you got to keep a, at least a part of your brain awake and alert. So you get a feel for your tools on both the spoke shave and the plane, you can loosen the catch and expose more or less of the blade and that's going to change how thick the piece is that you are taking off. But if this is your first time in your first paddle, you know, stay with a, as thin as shaving until you feel confident and then just a half turn at a time. You always want to evaluate a change um, cautiously so that you don't overdo it, so that the, the change you made was, was too big and you, you go faster than what you were intending or what you knew you were doing before you even were aware you were doing it. Some progress.